Hey guys, my name is Tyler and I own Chavis Performance and Engineering. So we have been around since 2018, um, but I've realized we don't have a lot of video. Uh, so that can be, you know, showing you guys the cars. Um, dyno, I think we're okay on because we have a lot of that. Um, but really just for those that have questions, maybe how we do something, um, you know, maybe something technical related, um, really, Anything and everything CPE related when it comes to LS conversions in the Porsche 996, 997 chassis. So with that said, we have the engine out of our Maritime Blue shop car uh, as we replace some brake lines. But um, yeah, we're putting it back in today and I figured this would be a good time to kind of show you the chassis prep, uh, what we modify uh, metal wise, uh, as well as what we modify regarding the cooling system, how we run our heater core lines, uh, our brake booster line, and just overall what is needed to get uh, this car fitted with an LS engine. So first things first, the rear tray on the 996 and the 997 need to be uh, trimmed. Uh, now, you know, I say that um, this is a rear end terminal. It's about a $1,500 uh, section from Porsche. It's spot welded in place. And truthfully, it doesn't take any uh, rigidity out of the chassis when removed. So we're not removing it in its entirety. Um, what we're actually doing is we're cutting the sheet metal right out back um, pretty much right here to make uh, to make room for our thermostat um, plumbing and then really just kind of over here uh, for uh, the water pump and some other accessories. What we do is we box this structure right here. You don't have to do that, but we do it. It's just a much cleaner uh, fabrication. Uh, and then we obviously spray some paint. Um, we actually order uh, the factory color and dust it uh, so it has a nice, uh, a nice finish. All right guys, so we're under the car right now and I just want to give you guys a better uh, showcase of what we are cutting. So from the passenger side to the driver side, you have a cross structure that extends. What we do is we cut that, we box that. This is a little bit more of the sheet metal that is trimmed. Uh, we go a little bit deeper right over here, again, to make room for the thermostat housing and the plumbing needed. Um, but that's it. That is all the modification, all the metal that needs to be cut. Um, let's move on to cooling. So your heater core lines are right here. You have your inner heater core hose and your outer heater core hose. They come up, they hug between the, uh, between the chassis and the e-brake cabling. We just kind of zip tie them to the uh, coolant pipes and whatnot nearby. They go up across the firewall. We use an insulated P-clamp uh, on the innermost one to secure that. They go behind this steam vent line right here that connects to the expansion tank. And then they tee, uh, the innermost one tees down into the bottom of the expansion tank. Um, this is a three quarter by three quarter by three quarter bar fitting on this one. And then the top one is a three quarter by five eighths bar fitting. The brake booster hose itself, what we do is we cut that, which ultimately runs up this way. We cut that, we use a five eighths piece of hose and we repurpose that and end up bending it out this way. And then we use literally a five eighths to half inch bar fitting that gets zip tied right to this, uh, right to this coolant pipe right here. And from there, that is where you connect your uh, half inch hose from the back of your intake manifold um, to the car. All right. So we've already married the engine and trans just for ease of time. And we use an 1,000 pound table car from Harbor Freight. Does the job, works wonders. Never had any issues with them in, well, since 2018. Let's see. Now, this is gonna take a little bit to get right. Um, the placement, obviously, we've done so many of them. I know the general area of where it goes. But as you're lowering the car down, you just wanna make sure that you're not pinching uh, a plug wire or, you know, resting the car in an ignition coil because you crack it. Um, but this already has the engine, trans, our adapter plate, flywheel, clutch kit, our engine harness, everything is already kind of in place. Um, we just got to put on the starter shield, but I kind of did this on purpose. I just want to show you guys exactly how we run everything. Um, so 
when these are placed in the car, bank two is on the driver's side and bank one is on the passenger side. Um, our harness, being that it is designed by us and it's manufactured specifically for the 996-997 LS conversion, um, it's literally in that of a U shape. So the base of the U is actually at the back of the engine. Um, that literally just tucks right underneath the brake booster line on the intake manifold. Bank one runs up here. Your bank one uh, oxygen sensor and your uh, crank sensor and your starter wire end up just kind of swooping right down there between the uh, between the the block and the exhaust manifold. Um, our battery cabling runs up from the starter, gets zip tied to the harness again at the base of the U, and then follows the factory conduit down to the junction box on the passenger side, and then right here with. Um, you know, with, with bank one, uh, this is where your um, ECU connectors and your Porsche chassis connections fall. So ultimately, they'll kind of wrap right around this, uh, this uh, ignition coil bracket, and they'll connect to the car into the ECU. If you're running flex fuel, we do integrate a flex fuel sensor in our harness as well. Um, and normally, we just run them off the fuel rail, so the fuel rail is flipped um, right now it's reversed, but you can just run the sensor right off the fuel rail or you can get an extension harness from us uh, if you want to run it underneath the car um, somewhere remote. So one thing I do want to kind of uh, emphasize is your AC pressure switch, your AC uh, compressor, signal wire, ground, uh, and your oil temp sensor. Now that wiring um, kind of follows bank two up to the front or I guess the rear of the car. Um, and that literally is gonna be strategically placed between the uh, AC compressor bracket and the block. So if you can see, there's a nice little channel right here that can fall down in. And just make sure that it, it, it is completely clearing anything where it could get pinched because we've had customers that say, hey, my AC compressor, every time I turn it on, it's popping the fuse. Um, well, that's gonna happen if you have it pinched between the bracket and the block. And this is a GM coolant temp sensor, um, just your standard two pin coolant temp sensor, but we actually use this in the oil sump to read oil temperature. Uh, now I will say this is, a, uh, this is a Moroso pan, but Moroso actually now makes a part number for us uh, with a bung already welded and the pan powder coated black. So forgive, uh, forgive us for that, that nasty weld, uh, that nasty weld work, but now we have a much cleaner solution. Now we are going to just kind of go through and get all of your engines. Sorry, not engines, but we're going to go through and get all your cylinder, all your mounting bolts in place.
Okay, so the motor plate bolts, they get torqued to 38 foot pounds. Um, and I'll go through and tighten things with a torque wrench uh, afterwards. But right now, again, we're mocking everything up loose. Um, I will snug these though, because in a second, the engine is gonna be supported um, by its own weight. So let's get to it. tighten or at least uh, snug these M10 bolts. All right guys, one thing I cannot show you on my car um, just because right now um, we're actually using it uh, to design a transmission bracket um, for these cars. Um, but I can show you on this car. We, uh, in doing these conversions on the 996 and the 997s, we push the whole powertrain one inch forward and we call it the CPE foremost uh, mounting position. Um, what this does is this allows you to retain the factory trunk latch, um, which is what I think critical. Um, competitors kind of leave it up to downforce to hold the trunk closed, which you just can't have. Uh, anyway, this transmission bracket has been modified. We have not uh, sprayed it yet because we literally want to show you guys, um, hey, this is where you modify it. So this is the horseshoe style bracket or we'll call it the top bracket of the uh, transmission. And what we do is these are the standard uh, mounting holes for um, such. We use the turbo GT mounting holes um, but they cannot use the non-turbo, non-GT uh, transmission mounting bracket. So we need to actually shorten these uh, left to right. And we do that by cutting these ears, cutting a few millimeters of material out, and then re-welding them. And just make sure that after you do this, you do paint these um, so you don't get rust and, you know, just it looks unclean. But, uh, yeah, so we're manufacturing brackets um, as well as the lower ones. Um, so nobody needs to do this anymore. Um, and it will make conversions uh, way more accessible for most people um, and then easier for those that can fabricate. All right, guys, so this is our uh, billet lower subframe brace. Now, this is a prototype. Um, we have ones that fit for LS conversions. We are working on LV, LT conversions as well, but we're working on a one piece fits all. Um, so this is a prototype. Uh, we need to mill this fairly significantly um, just for R&D. So I'm not happy about that. I know it's super thin. Um, it's 100% stronger than the factory uh, cast aluminum brace when we modify those, but we're just gonna mock this up just so you guys can see what it looks like on the car. That's pretty, I mean, that's pretty damn perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put these bolts through. Um, wow. See how much more it actually, how much more material yeah. we remove? Yeah, compared to the other one. I was just, thinking, yeah, yeah. yeah, just because the LV sits, it sits so much lower. Um, but wow, that's really, you know, that's really crazy. Alright guys, so that was a super short um, but concise kind of, hey, this is us putting the engine in, this is kind of what you need to do chassis prep wise. 
Um, I hope with some of the voiceover and just some of the shots that we ultimately edit in, um, I hope that you guys are able to see exactly what is required and it doesn't seem too daunting. Um, regarding, you know, I guess the next steps for this car, uh, we need to have the exhaust made. We need to do, you know, some miscellaneous stuff like connect the axles, um, put our production trans brackets in, um, you know, just really kind of just wrap it up, if you will. Um, outside of getting the exhaust done, then we can actually do our first start, which is really exciting. Um, that's always nice whenever you put an engine in or put an engine back in. Uh, and then this will go to the dyno because one thing we are doing this time that we didn't do last time is we installed a Racetronics uh, Walboro 450 inline pump using the OEM pump in the tank as more of a lift pump, um, but so we can actually run E85 or flex fuel. So we'll get it tuned on that. Um, and yeah, you'll see it out and about.